Hello, and welcome back to another bonus episode of Green and White, brought to you by Argyle Life. It feels like I've been doing an awful lot of these uh, recently. Plymouth Argyle have announced the permanent signing, and I'm going to check with you here, Luke. Is it is it Sorinola? Yeah, Matty Sorinola. We'll, yeah, we'll go with that. Wing back yeah. Matty Sorinola, who was previously on the books of both MK Dons, Swansea City, and I'm really bad at pronunciations. Union Saint Gerois. We'll go with that. Saint um, Galois. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not expert in that do. one. <laughs> um, I'm joined by a familiar face on this this podcast now, uh, Luke from Swans Cast, to learn about our new man. How's things? Yeah, good. Thank you. How how are things with yourself? Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> Busy. Like we've been. We've had a bit of a, a mad January. I think yours yeah. has been a bit quiet, but um, very quiet. Yeah. 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 Well, you've got a new manager. I'm sure we, we might we might touch on that in his time. But um, obviously, we've been c- catching up on an awful lot recently over the last couple of seasons. Obviously, first Morgan Whitaker, then Luke Condo, and now uh, Matthew Sorinola. A bit yeah. of an open ended question, as I always start, because I can't really be bothered to prepare for these things. Um, what can you tell us about our new man? Um, look, he had a loan spell at Swansea from obviously the club that's currently sitting top of the Belgium Belgium League. So I think maybe when he came here, they wouldn't do quite as well as what they're doing now, but I can understand why he's maybe surplus to requirements there. He came to the Championship, uh, played under Russell Martin, started mm. the season kind of first choice wing back. The system that he deployed at Swansea, he needed attacking wing backs, and that's that's what he is. Okay, he's for a for a I guess the modern wing back or full back, you find in a lot more players who are more competent going forward than maybe defending. Um, you know, the old fashioned way would be defend first, attack later. It seems like quite often you find in some of these young wing backs coming through that are the opposite, and he's definitely one that fits that mould. And obviously, he can't defend, but it definitely isn't his uh, strongest point. But then at the same mm. time, he's probably not as useful as having an out and out winger if that makes sense who puts him in a bit of a bit of a middle ground but not to say he's not useful in a wing back role he had a couple of assists for us caused a little bit of uh, damage down the down the wide areas and and he got two goals during his, his spell at Swansea however he did fall out with the team um definitely the second half of the season he was a little bit less used than in the first half um you know, in the first half when he was coming in and he'd have some raw games or rough games and I guess our first happy to give the time but the more mistakes keep creeping in and, and you don't really see the improvement I guess that's how he slipped on the pecking order and what, what alarm bells ring for me is he ended the season quite often on the bench um, losing out to Joe Latabodia and Harry Darling playing the right wing back role or right back role when we did switch to a back four uh, when he's a right wing back or right back by trade losing out the centre-backs in that position due to form and preference on the pitch. So maybe that says it all. And the fact that we didn't look to re-sign him afterwards and he's a free agent now, by all account, wet before he went to you. And, mm. you know, we, we didn't really seem look to look um, to bring him back. Um, yeah. No, I mean, he's not awful. He's a good, he's decent at this level. It's just, I think it's one that flattered to deceive a little bit while he was at Swansea. Yeah, I, I was going to say, obviously, you, you've mentioned Russell Martin already. He's, he's clearly a fan of him, having him at MK Dons and, and Swansea. And, yeah. and there was rumour, there's rumours that he wanted him back at uh, Southampton too. Is, is that because of his on-the-ball ability? Like, is, I wouldn't say his on-the-ball ability is anything special. I think it right. is a case of Russell Martin did bring a couple of players from MK Dons, you know, Harry Darling and um, yeah. Andy Fisher. Andy Fisher was apparently brought in for his ability on the ball and if you ask any Swansea fans, they would uh, hope to never see him play in the goal again. He's a very contentious um, uh, doesn't goalkeeper. Doesn't play the Swansea so, way. Yeah, he's. I, he's just, he, I think he just doesn't cope with pressure very well. He's quite a small built goalkeeper and he doesn't always do shots top in the best. So then when you're making mistakes doing ball playing, which is kind of what you brought in for, it's like, well, why are you here really? Mm. And we spent a bit of money on him as well. So it wasn't like we got him necessarily on the cheap and the money we spent on him maybe it had an impact on areas we couldn't strengthen. So a bit of a bitter taste on him, but he's second choice for us now. I know we're not here to talk about him. But with Sorinola, um, he's another one of Martin's MK Dons, kind of like he didn't come direct from them, but obviously he brought him in on loan uh, from Union. Mm. based on his connections and, and what he would have known from him in the League One days. Uh, 
I think maybe he's probably a player that's in between League One Championship level. And when he came here, he wasn't quite able to sort of establish himself at Championship level. Uh, like we've had Josh, Josh Key this year, who's been significantly better, who's also come from League One, but has definitely stepped up. Now, that's not to say that Sorinola can't, and maybe after having a year with us, that experience will, will have done him good. Um, but the links with Southampton, I think, were just lazy paper talk, because, right. as I said, he fell out of the team under Russell Martin towards the end of the season, when we had our best form uh, the last seven games of the season, where we didn't lose and only um, drew two of the games and won the rest. You know, he wasn't really getting on the pitch. There was rumours after Christmas that, you know, he'd fallen out with him and maybe there was attitude issues there. We we, we let Michael Obifemi go for similar reasons and it was kind of circulating that Sorinola was in a similar situation and there was a bit of rumours he was going to get recalled or even the loan terminated, which didn't happen. Um, but there was a long period where he didn't get on the pitch. There was a few matches, he didn't even make the bench. So I'm not sure what happened there. That's all speculation. Uh, mm. But yeah, like I said, we didn't look to go back in for him. And I I mean, if Russell Martin took him to Southampton, I would have been shocked based on the riches that they've got as well, to be honest. But he's, mm. he's they've got Kyle Walker, Peters, for example, and I, he wouldn't get on the pitch with someone like that there. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think where you describe him as a player where he's, you know, top end league one, bottom end championship, I think that's where obviously we find ourselves both. Yeah. In terms of in the table and uh, budgetary wise, obviously we, you know we're in a slightly fishing in a slightly different pond to most of the championship, and we have to take these punts, and we don't currently have yeah apart from Joe Edwards, we only have one right back at the club. So it's, I think you know it's more needed than than if we had time to to mull this one over. Um, obviously, you've mentioned it already, but obviously like most modern wing, uh, wing backs now, they seem to. Have be quite unbalanced. I mean, you've already mentioned this, but he's he's much more attacking than than he is defensive. Yeah, I was going to say from his from his highlights, really, he seemed to be very very high up on on either side. Um, is that is that his main? I want to say strength, but obviously you, you you sort of want like you want defensive minded players in in defensive roles, right? Yeah. But I suppose like. Yeah, I'm just trying to extrapolate a strength from you here, basically, in a long-winded way. Um, I think he, he's he's small, and he? he's quite a small built, and mm. he has got a bit of pace to him. We haven't got an abundance of pace in our squad, and he probably would have been one of the quickest players uh, that we had. And he can get into good forward positions. Like I said, he scored a few goals for us from wing back, and um, I think quite often you like you can get a wing back that doesn't get into those situations. Like I would say, even though Joe Latabodi came in quite often and took that role, as much as I said, the fans don't didn't necessarily weren't craving to have Sorinola back. I don't think they would have said no to taking him back. He, you know, he's a good squad player. Like I feel like I maybe have talked quite negative. Like he isn't <laughs> awful at all. Like by any stretch, well, you know. Good. As long um, as he's not awful, we'll take it. But but like. <laughs> There was frustration with Lata Bodia coming in for us that he wasn't given as much going forward. You definitely missed that from yeah. not having Sorinola. But maybe then you you got more of the defensive side. But the way that our system worked, it was very, very evident when Lata Bodia was getting in higher up the pitch areas that he was struggling to take players on and kind of make something happen. And he would work hard and run and do all those things. But, he, you know, he's a centre back and you putting him in positions up on the wing so it was quite evident he wasn't that but Sorinola coming in in those areas when we're on top of, you know on top of other teams ahead in games or like controlling games then yeah you, you could see a lot of good things from him in terms of attacking other players and running um, not maybe what you get or some of your players that you've got there already like Whitaker's obviously doing really good things for you right now but, mm. but definitely useful and I know the way that you play you're quite you're scoring a lot of goals and you're quite um Mm. attacking and just, maybe even countering defend, basically yeah yeah so i feel i, I was going to say i feel like you perhaps perhaps would suit your style and your system quite well because i don't mean this in this respectful way i find it quite exciting but like quite often i see plymouth games as trying to just score more mm. as than the opposition um so if that's the sort of way that you go into trying to approach the rest of the season it could fit in there because he could help with that sort of counter and like being on top, even if you have one or two slip ups and you're trying to get that extra goal over the opposition. I think he's the sort of player that would fit into that sort of system. And and on the counter as well, he's definitely got the pace to break away and do something. 
Yeah, no, so obviously, I, I, you know, I'll give you, um, not you personally, I'll give you some credit, but it's fair to say that as a fan base, um, you know, you were quite wrong about Morgan Whitaker. Is there any chance lightning strikes twice here and, and, and that we actually pick up a real gem that you just you just didn't see? You just didn't see his talents? Um, there is a chance, but obviously I think Union have also had similar opinions. He hasn't yeah. really played a lot for them. But then at the same time, you know, they're pushing on in Europe and doing things a little bit higher than the championship. So maybe it's a different level that like he's not quite there yet. And I'm not, I wouldn't write Sorinola off at all of being a solid championship player because I think that's probably where he is, especially mid table, bottom half. Yeah. Um, for us now, we've we've brought in Josh Key, so it's quite easy to see if they were both here. Sorinola's not starting if they're both fit, you know, ever really. Uh, currently, Josh Key and Ashby, our other right back, are both injured, so if Sorinola's mm. here, then he does, he does play. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a chance that he can push on. I think he's still a young player, isn't he? He's still got time to develop. Um, as for Whitaker, I feel like that's probably something <laughs> we don't want to talk about right now. But um, mismanagement, but you, mismanagement at his best. That's definitely yeah, what that I mean, is. Not yeah. brilliant for us if he, if he moves on, but brilliant for you if there's some sort of um, sell on yeah. clause, which I'm, I'm pretty sure there is. You know, nothing not, hasn't been disclosed, but. Um, pretty sure you're going to be getting a, a sizable chunk of money when he goes to uh, uh, Brentford or West Ham or Fulham or uh, Atalanta or wherever it is he's linked to next, to be honest. So I think I think that's good for you in, in some respects. I mean, obviously, uh, you mentioned it at the, at the top there, obviously, new manager in Luke Williams. Took you a while to appoint him, obviously, but I feel like you got the right man. Yeah. Yeah. Um... A lot of people are saying it's Russell Martin take two, I guess. And right. when Russell Martin left, there was a lot of discontent around leaving the style. Um, for me, I was happy to try it. But I think Swansea way so embedded in the fan base, in the club and the culture, that if you're not going to do that, you kind of got to be successful. So Steve mm-hmm. Cooper kind of did that, uh, got us to the playoffs twice. And even though he did that, Quite often you won't hear fans speak so favourably of Steve Cooper, even though he's technically our most successful manager since we got relegated. Um, mm. And Russell Martin came in, brought the style of play, but got two mid-table finishes. But because he was doing it the right way, if you like, um, mm. fans were happy to give him time or a little bit more time. And Luke Williams, who was an assistant at Swansea under Russell Martin, is thought to and sounds like it's going to bring a very similar way of playing back to the club so a lot of people are excited about it it's hard to say if it's the right man until you see it but from what you've seen at Notts County from what he's done there um, and the way that he's speaking the way he's got himself involved in the club already um, yeah I think I think it should be a good appointment and we quite often we get it right maybe you could say Michael Duff is, was the wrong one there was definitely good moments and one of those was I guess unfortunately for yourself down at Plymouth mm. um, but yeah, given time, it should it should be a good match. Yeah, obviously we play you soon. I'm very much looking forward to a two nil win, uh, in which uh, Whitaker and uh, Saranola score. Um, very much looking forward to that. Um, back up at the Liberty, um, but yeah, is it no? Is it the Liberty now, or do you, is it the Swansea? Uh, the Swansea dot com stadium, yeah, because yeah, um, yeah it's very exciting name. Yeah, it's been it's been a very long time since I, I last visited there, so I'm looking forward to that. But um, yeah. thanks for your time, mate. Appreciate That's that. Right. I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. There'll yeah, there might something. be another. There'll be a player somewhere else, I'm sure, along the line, going one yeah. way or the other. I'm sure there will be. <laughs> um, but I look forward to catching up when that happens. Cheers, mate. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for having me.